Zach here. Uh, if you watch my previous video on any API to URI, you might be familiar with this, the movie database example. Uh, what I'm gonna do in this video is actually go ahead and walk through in a little bit more detail how you can use JSON query to filter the response that you get from the movie data database API um, and hopefully help you kind of filter through and transform complex data objects that you come across. So the first thing I do is I went ahead and ran the playbook that I talked about in the previous video, and you can see I get this output um, from the favorite movies endpoint um, with the JSON key and then this payload. So for me, when I'm troubleshooting these types of things, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this object, and I'm going to paste it into Sublime because they've got a good plugin. As you can see, I'd already done it once. I'll do, I'm gonna use this pretty, pretty JSON to format it. So I do this just so I can see exactly what the object looks like um, and get a feel for what I want to query out of it. Um, and also it's a nice visual. So you can see here I've got this list in the results key. Um, and the list is of each movie. So uh, this first one here is for Oppenheimer and we've got a few different properties here. Uh, we've got a nested list, so the genre IDs, this one falls into multiple genres. Uh, if I scroll down, Blanca falls into three genres. Um, but all the same properties, so a nice kind of clean data model we've got here. Now, when we think about JSON query, the reason for it would be like, let's say this payload is just too much information. You don't, you don't necessarily want to bring all this back. You just want to look at something. Like you just want a list of titles, right? We'll start there. So what I do is I use the online JMS path tutorial and I'm able to get live feedback. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this object and I'll hop over there. So it's at this jmspath.org slash tutorial. And it's got these kind of input boxes here that you can paste your own data and then just write query and it'll give you live feedback in the result on the right. Let me paste my object in here. And as you see, it went null, right? Because I changed the object and we've got A in here. But the first thing I want to do is, if you remember from the object on the left or that I showed in Sublime, we've got this result keyed array. So I'm just going to type results in here and you'll see just by typing results, I've already isolated the list that was a part of the object. So I'll start with saying, like, let's say we just want the titles. Um, so when you're writing JSON queries, the way you do a list protection is you just do um, the open and close bracket, and that will project a list, and then I can do an expression to apply to each element in that list. So if I just want the title, I'm just gonna say dot title. And as you can see, it went ahead and isolated just the title from each of those movies. And this can be useful. Maybe I wanna, I don't know, pipe that into a database table or something like that, um, or use it in a successive task. Uh, but that was a pretty simple example. Let's say I don't just want the title. So let's scroll, go back over to our object here. Um, maybe I'm interested in the title and the release date. Um, so if I want to grab multiple properties, I just need to modify this query a little bit. So we've still got our list projection and we still want to operate on each element in the list. But this time, since I'm selecting multiple properties, I'm going to add open and close curly braces. And then here, I'll basically define my object as I want it to be. So I want a title key and I want to use the title value. Um, I want a release date and I want to use the release date value. Um, and you can see how, like, if this is incorrect, this is the value that it's, it's evaluating from the object itself. So if I, you know, delete the E, right, it's going to be null because it doesn't exist. Um, one cool thing with this, too, is if for whatever reason you want to rename the keys themselves in your resulting object, I can actually change this one. So I could say release, uh, let's just say DT, right? And it will actually change it there, but still pull the value from um, what's entered on the right here. So this value can't change, but you can change the key in your resulting object. So it's pretty cool here. So I, now I've got a list of objects um, as opposed to just a list of strings. So when we're when you're pulling multiple properties, it's going to put it into an object. If you're pulling a single property, it'll just be a list of whatever type that property is. So let's get a little bit fancier here and say, um, I don't actually want all my favorite movies. Let's say I had added a ton, right? I had like 100 favorite movies and I don't want a list of 100 movies. I just want the top two. So I'm gonna leave the selection as title just to keep it simple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this list projection. So JMS Path is a Python library and if you're familiar with Python syntaxing, you can actually slice arrays. Um, so basically indicate which elements you want. 
So I'm going to do a colon here, and I'm going to say two. And you'll see that it trimmed it down to just two elements, um, specifically the first two elements. And how that works is by me leaving nothing before the colon, that just implies zero, so start at the first element, and then go up until the second element. So it excludes, or sorry, the element in position two. So it excludes the element in position two. Now, Python arrays are zero index, right? So that would actually be the third element. So we've got the first and the second element, which are, in this case, Oppenheimer and Wonka. So if I were to change it to three, right, I would get all three elements. Um, if I change it to one, I would just get the first element. So that's another way you can kind of trim down what you're getting back um, and kind of do some operations on these complex uh, objects themselves. So one other fun example I want to show is Let's say I actually want to evaluate a condition, right? Uh, the example I'm using in my blog post is vote average. So let's say um, this movie is about 8.1, and then we've got a, a 7, we've got another 8. So let's say like I'm considering 8 a really good rating. Let's say I just want to isolate the objects that only have a rating above 8, right? I don't want to see my favorites. I want to see my favorites that other people actually like too. So what I can do here is I can actually, in this array, list projection, I can also put a filter. So when it projects the list, it will actually filter based off the condition. And I do that by starting with a question mark. And then I put the property that I want to use. So in this case, it's going to be that vote average. And then a simple comparator that you're used to if you use, you know, generic programming language, so the greater than sign. And to indicate that I'm using a numeric literal, right, because I have a number, I'm going to do back ticks, and then the number eight. And you'll see that it actually filtered the results list and Wonka was removed. And that is because if we come back to our object, the vote average is less than eight. So I thought this was a pretty cool example. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do here uh, with Jamin's path tutorial. Um, if you come here online, there's a lot of great, so just some more in-depth explanations of what I walk through with slicing. Um, you, can, you can even do stepping, so right, you can slice and step where you take every second element, um, scroll down a little bit further, um, all sorts of cool things. You can do object projections, um, and then there's you can flatten. So if you have you know some nested lists and you want to flatten them down, um, you can do that as well. And what I wanted to get to too was, you know, here's where the filter example is, and you know using it to compare a string, and you can do piping, which is really powerful multi-select, which is super powerful. Um, and if I scroll all the way down here, we can even use some functions, which is pretty cool. Um, I can actually do length of people, or if I had like a nested array, or if I, let's say I wanted to get the number of genres that my movie was a part of, I could use the link function on the genres property. Um, there are also other functions, right? So you can do max um, and things like that. So array contains. So like I said, it's really powerful. Um, Please feel free to kind of take a look at my examples and play with it yourself. I highly recommend using the online tutorial rather than going into your playbooks. And if I scroll down here, the way that we actually use the query is we're going to use the JSON query filter plugin and we'll put our query in there. Um, but instead of coming here, making changes, running your whole playbook, um, seeing whether it worked or not, um, use the online tutorial. It's, it's such a quicker feedback loop and it'll save you a lot of time. Um, I will always recommend if you are dealing with some sensitive data uh, before you put your data model up into the tutorial, just kind of mask out the sensitive values, right? Keep the data model the same because that's what really matters, but you can always modify the values. So if this was useful to you, um, please feel free to drop a comment, especially if you have some challenges with a query you're trying to write, I'm more than happy to help out. Um, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.